So I think, ladies and gentlemen, the idea of this talk is to give you an outline of what you need to look for on your boat that indicates to you you might need to get somebody like me to come and look at it. So what is a typical good gas system? You'll have a gas locker, I won't recommend doing that on yours, which will contain your gas cylinder. The gas locker needs to be gas tight. Therefore, if there's a leak from the cylinder, it will go into the bottom of the gas locker and overboard by a drain. That drain wants to run downhill at all times, not uphill. It wants to be sealed and tight through the gas locker, not like this. So therefore, yours is like that, what I'm just looking at. Inside the gas locker, my, my preferred system is a regulator directly onto the cylinder. That means that all the pressure from there on in is at low pressure, as opposed to the type where you have a high pressure hose going to a regulator the bulkhead. This regulator actually has an over pressure valve in it. So if the pressure inside the cylinder is greater than the regulator can cope with, it will dump the extra pressure into the locker via vent hose and directly overboard. Older style regulators don't have that. Canning, gas, canning regulators don't have it. Um, some of the foreign regulators don't have it. This does. You've then got a hose, preferably unclipped, which is a crimpon clip, not a jubilee type of clip. That goes to a bulkhead fitting and then to a copper pipe. The copper pipe wants to line the full length of the vessel. It wants to be clipped at regular intervals. Preferably with these stainless steel rubber line clips which protect the pipe and prevent abrasion. You then come to a quarter turn valve. The idea of this will come on board, you can turn your gas on in your locker, you go down below, you turn your quarter turn valve on, and you light your appliance. Finish with the appliance, turn the quarter turn valve off. You then know that that system is as tight as it can get, there are no leaks. So if you're looking at your own system, what sort of things do you need to look for that indicate to you that it's not right, it needs some better attention? Quite common are these type of things. They're fitted to the inside of the gas locker and they have a high pressure hose, as in this hose from there to the top of the cylinder is at the pressure of the bottle. It doesn't reduce down until it touches that regulator. Then the pressure is lower through the vessel. As you can see by the corrosion on that, they're not designed for the marine environment, but you will see the print from off on the ground. You may see an electronic valve. The idea of that is it sits in there, and from a place down near the cooker, you can turn the gas valve on. So you come on board, you turn your regulator on, and then below by the cooker, you can turn the gas valve on. This one quite clearly says on it, water and inert gases only. I took this off of the boat two days ago. When you turn it on, it actually gets hot. It actually gets hot to the touch. An indicator inside your boat, you may have something like this, would be a switch that doesn't say gas. It doesn't say gas on, doesn't say gas off. So that would indicate you've got something like that that has been incorrectly fitted. Coming through the boat, another one I've stripped out recently, this had a hose on the boat side of the gas locker. These are actually hydraulic hose fittings, they're not gas fittings, they're not designed for purpose. And while we're pointing at this, these Jubilee clips or worm drive kit clips are not the best thing for securing hoses. Regulators I've taken off recently. That's the spring rusted through. There's actually a spring. This regulator was giving about eight times the pressure down to the cooker than it should have been. Another fitting. This, if you've ever seen them, is a valve that senses too much flow downstream. It will shut itself off automatically. But unfortunately, this one has been fitted with long parallel threads. Now, LPG, liquid petroleum gas, is very much like WD-40. It will find its way around these threads. Long threads, long screw threads like these, are not approved for LPG use. If you see something like that, it needs getting rid of. This one, this came off of a charter yacht that was fitted out in Italy. Quite clearly on there, you can see an arrow. That's the flow of the gas. The gas came into this one this way, and out to the cooker that way. 
it was an awning, it was absolutely no use whatsoever to be fitted upside down. As had its partner, Solid Door 12, that had been fitted the wrong way around. And that was from the original fit out. Going back to our boat, from your quarter turn valve, an armoured hose. Most of us have got gimbal cookers, so therefore you want an armoured hose. You don't want, and this is only half of it, some of you had that going round to feed the cooker. That is off of a brand new boat, again, not marine quality would grow through very quickly. What is LPG? Liquid petroleum gas. It's a byproduct of the cracking process that makes petrol and diesel. We usually see it in two types, butane in the blue bottles, propane in the red bottles. This cylinder contains enough gas to fill this entire room with an explosive mixture. This gas will explode between 2% and 10%. There's enough in there to fill this entire space with an explosive mixture. So if you make that down to your 30 foot boat, 40 foot boat, you can get an explosive mixture out of one of these seven times over. So if the boat's actually as big as this, I'm not sure why we can't jump anyway. <laughs> so this is a nice looking installation. Clipped, quarter turn. Gas bottle in the gas locker, marine regulator, on through to the cooker. A test point. Now when I test, I use an electronic manometer. My initial test is done from this point here without the regulator on. I can test down, and although it looks a little bit Heath Robinson, it's worked for me for donkey's years, because I've tried all sorts of little valves and they always leak. I can test down from here, down to there. I'm looking for absolutely zero, absolutely zero drop. This manometer is, is accurate down to 0.1 of a millibar. 0.1 of a millibar is 0 0.0015 of a PSI. So about 20,000 times less than what's in your car tire. So when I test from there to there, I know there's no leaks whatsoever through the boat. I can then test by the test point back to the quarter turn valve. And I'm looking for what sort of drop I've got on the cooker. If there's a, a drop that exceeds regulations, then the cooker fails. The other test I do is carbon monoxide. Older cookers like this belch carbon monoxide. They give it off in great quantities. If we just like this one, we're in a big enough area that this isn't actually a, an issue. The very worst thing are grills. If you can see the yellow flames, the yellow flame is unburnt gas. And unburnt gas gives carbon monoxide. You see the gauge going up already, 220, 600. 1500 parts per million. Doesn't sound a lot. Carbon monoxide starts to get dangerous from 70 parts per million upwards. It depends on the exposure time. But obviously the smaller the space you're in, the greater the risk. Again, it takes no time at all to turn your own cooker on and check that. If you see yellow flames, something's not right. It might just be an old cooker, it might be the regulator's not given the right pressure, but most commonly, on something that looks like that, it's because it's old, it's corroded, it's dirty. Unfortunately, there's very, very few cookers have any form of self-sensing device on them. The other thing this old cooker doesn't have is flame failure devices. If you turn the gas on, and light it and blow it out with a cuff of the wind that comes through a porthole, that gas will relight and again and again and again. What you're looking for on your cooker is a small, almost pencil nib type device 
in the side of here somewhere, that senses the flame. If the flame goes out, it will shut the gas off. Older cookers like this don't have them. You should have that on the oven, and don't confuse it with the sensor that actually senses the temperature. It should be on the oven, the grill, and the hobs. So, gas locker, ring regulator, system through the boat, armoured hose, bad cooker. So, if you're looking at your own boat, stuff to look for, and stuff that gives you an indication that somebody's been messing around with it. That's about it, really. Questions? How often should you get it checked? I produce a gas safety certificate. The gas safety certificate I give is valid for a year. I reckon after a year of use at sea, which can be a very long time, or three days, depending on how much you use the boat, then I'd like to check them a year, every year. Once it all looks all up to standard, the actual check doesn't take that long, it doesn't cost that much. You will find more and more insurance companies and more and more surveyors insisting on a gas safety cert. And if you don't mind expanding on your question a bit, it brings you on to the who can and who can't work on the gas. I'm the bloke with the qualification, I'm the bloke with the licence number. I will tell you, if you install the gas locker and you install the pipe through the butt boat, you install the cooker on its gimbals but do not make any gas connections, I will happily make all the gas connections to sign it off. If you make the gas connections, I won't want to touch it, because I want to take out your work to ensure that the fittings have got the right audit in there, the pipe's pushed in the right way, we put the turnbars the right way around, etc, etc, etc. At the end of the day, it's my name at the bottom of the ticket. The gas hose that goes from the bottle has got a life on it, hasn't it? So you've got to replace it every five years. What about the motor Yeah, I'm glad someone spotted that. It's yeah, you are quite right. On the hose, there is a date. Sometimes you'll see a date slightly older than you think it's going to be because by manufacturer distribution and um, retail outlets where you buy the hose from, then it might be a year behind. I mean, this is actually a piece of hose that I bought only a couple of days ago. It's actually got 2014 on it. Yeah, you, you'll probably won't see it at the moment 2016 hose. But that is a good indication. The other indication is what dates on your certificate. Well, just going back to that question, you're, you're meant to replace the hose after five years, aren't you? Yes, uh, that's correct. Yeah. But what about the armoured hose on the appliance? So, that has a little badge on it. Has a little face badge on there. Those badges have got a very convenient little way of hooking them over and taking them off, but actually they're also stuck on. So if you find a, an armoured hose with a little sticky patch like the other side of your tape, someone's peeled the badge off it, that again will have the same days on it. Usually the locker hose and the cooker hose will have been changed at the same time. When you finish with your cooker, some people recommend you turn it off at the end of valve and bleed everything through and burn it off at the cooker itself. So you empty, so you're vacating your hose line of the gas. What's your thoughts? An old cooker like this, one should be in boat anyway, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to burn to zero and to get rid of the gas in the pipe. Most modern cookers will pass what we call a tightness test and the valves will hold the gas in the pipe without any problem at all. But pure and utter safety depends on the run a lot of, from that to the turn up to there. There's, the amount of gas in there is not enough in an average 30 foot to be known to keep a combustible display Again, that depends on the run. You know, if this is back in, if this is in your cockpit backing directly off where your gas is, that's not much of a run. But if it's on a, a 60 foot and it's, it's been done in 3.8 pipes, then yes, that's a significant amount of gas. So, yes, not a bad idea for an arm to cook that. I really bad idea for anything about when you cook it. Talks about regulators, marine grade regulators. Um, well, I've gone to the channel, you can only get the Bob Standard blue jobs, and they grow out with them, yeah. I, um, I also bought from my charges recently a first aid kit, and I'm offering a bit later on the tonsillectomies. 
because why the child will sell these, I don't know. There is no, there's no law stopping you buying a car and driving it without a license. There's no law you buying these things. The reason they continue to sell these is they're, they're cheap. And that's not that. But, yeah, they, they don't last. No. So, so, so have you got a marine grade one yet? This one here is marine grade. All the ones I fit now, that obviously they're available for this type of cylinder, for the 4.5s, propane cylinders. You can even get the clip-on ones, which don't often see clip-on cylinders on the boat. Right, and they're available on the internet, though? They are available on the internet. Yeah, so they're about seven times the price. But what they do have is that overpressurisation relief, which is a big, big safety device. I think it was that one recently that I tested and instead of giving the rating expected, it was giving five times. It was basically letting pretty much pocket pressure come straight through. So yeah, they may be more expensive but they really are worth it. And, and will they last? Yes, I mean, they do last. The yeah. thing I know is that if you turn that, the spindle that comes out of the regulator, the roads, so so I think it's useless. Yeah. So on a marine grade one, it's, it's not corroding material. Like that one. I mean, that, that bottle was on, unable to be turned off without actually unscrewing the back. And yeah. these, this is all stuff I've collected off the boats in the last month, tops. You know, pretty much everyone I go on to is, is in, a, in a poor state. It's, uh, uh, gas itself. How can you tell if you've got a leak? Obviously, you can smell it, you can see it, you can even see it if it's a really bad leak, you'll see a bit of freezing. If it's that bad a leak, you can smell it a long time ago. LPG itself has no smell. Same as natural gas, there is no smell at all. They actually put a chemical agent into it so you can smell it. And I was told I wasn't allowed to do the joke, but it's called a stenching agent, which is not to be confused with Chinese secret service. Um, yeah. Awful lot you can do yourself as a practical boat owner, you can get a lot of this installed, but when it comes to putting the fittings in and doing the testing and doing the certification, unfortunately you've got to turn something else in. But I don't charge a lot.